Hello and welcome to SOAP UI tutorial. So in last tutorial what we have learned is all about the script assertion when the response will be in the JSON format. Okay. Now there is a possibility that the response will be in the XML format as well. So in the REST API case the response could be in JSON format or the REST uh, or XML format. However in the SOAP um, web service it will always be in in the XML format now what we'll cover in this tutorial is to do the script assertion for the SOAP request for which the response is in the XML format now this will remain same um, the, the steps will remain same even for the rest API's when the response is in the XML format so if you have to do a script assertion when the response is in XML you just follow the steps that I'm explaining in this particular tutorial so what I'll do is I'll take the calculator web service that we had used before this is the SOAP service and I have already added an addition test here All right so here you can see the, the request is in the XML format and the response will be in the XML format as well because this is a SOAP request okay so in order to start with the script assertion what you need to do is in the in your test step just go to the assertions okay so I've already added the script assertion here I'll remove this and just click on the plus sign and select the script and script assertion and click add and it will open the script window script assertion window where you can utilize the script with log context and message exchange variable okay so we had seen the same for the JSON now we'll verify or write the script assertion for XML uh, response verification or validation okay so like in the JSON case we used JSON slurper class to read the content of the um, to uh, to parse the content of the uh, of the JSON that we were receiving right so in the case of XML we'll be using XML holder class okay so we'll use message exchange to get the response uh, content and store it in a variable and then we'll use XML holder to parse through the XML response and go to the respective node and get the value that we are going to verify okay so to start with the first step that we are going to do is to import the XML holder okay so there is a um, import XML holder class so import and then com dot everywhere dot soap UI dot support dot XML holder so that's the class that you need to import all right next step is to get the message or the response the XML response and store it into a variable so we'll define a variable we'll say um, XML response and so that's the variable that we have defined and we'll store it into this particular variable and for storing we'll use message exchange okay so message exchange what it does is uh, this is a class um, that will read the response and store into the variable so what we'll do is we'll we are reading the response and then storing the response content into this particular variable so message exchange um, sorry message exchange dot response dot response content so the response content or the XML response content has been read and stored into the XML response variable all right now the next step is to parse through this response and go to the respective node okay so for that we need XML holder class that we have imported in the first line okay so the next step will be we'll define another variable and name it as parse XML response you can provide any any name that is convenient for you so I'll just say parse XML response and then we'll use the class XML holder 
uh, or we'll, sorry we'll create the object new XML holder and then pass this XML response as an argument okay so now what we are doing is we are creating an object of the XML holder class and then we are passing this XML response that we have stored in the XML response variable into the XML holder class okay let me change the spelling here so response and response okay now this parse XML response variable has the ability to parse this particular so this is the object that we have created now we can parse through the nodes or pass through this XML um, and go through the nodes that we are looking for okay so now we have this parsed uh, XML response now let's see that's the response that we have got right so we have um, add response and then we have add result and add result is what we will be verifying so we'll be verifying the content of the add result okay so to go go into add res result node what you need to do is you just need to use this particular variable parse XML response and then because this this is uh, this gives us ability to parse the whole XML now we'll go to the particular node so parse XML response dot get node value okay that's the method supported um, uh, for this particular uh, object and we need to go to the node that we are looking for okay and then you have to provide the X path to go to that particular node okay so for example here if you see the root um, so basically we'll start with the double slash okay and then we'll say add response and then we'll say add result okay and that's it so what this will give us is this will give us the value inside the add result node so if you just say log dot info it should print so we'll run this script and it says script assertion passed but it didn't print the value let's see what's the issue there okay so when you analyze this particular response here you can see that there is a namespace at top so xml ns um, colon so so basically anything after colon uh, is defined uh, defined is a namespace and if you see the add response there is no namespace or there is no colon and then there is no value there right so if there is no namespace either you have to define it manually or you can simply say star in this case if i say star and colon so it will basically take anything or um, all the namespaces uh, th that wildcard and it should be able to print okay so i'll clear these logs and run this again now you can see the value 4 is being printed now this will work in this case but not necessarily in all the cases right so you can use star but then if it doesn't work the best thing is to define a namespace so wherever the namespace is not there you can define the namespace in the response so in order to define the namespace what you can do is um, in the script itself you can say parse xml response so this I just pick this object okay and then you just say namespaces and provide the name so um, namespace name so I'll just say ns1 okay in square braces and provide the URL okay so here we don't have the namespace so we just provide the URL for the URI uh, for the URI for which we don't have the namespace okay so I'll just say temp URI dot org okay and close the brackets um uh, close with the quotes now in the next line instead of using the star what you can use is you can just say ns1 
and NS1. All right, so it will work. Let me clear the log. And if you run this, now you can see the value 4 is being printed successfully. So that is something which you need to you know like figure out and many scenarios you will see that the response doesn't contain the namespace so if it doesn't contain the namespace use the combination of star or define your own namespace defining your namespace is the best um, way um, to make sure that you are able to traverse to the nodes of the x path but you can also use um, the star in case you are able to figure out the value using the star and colon right as we have done in this so now we have got the value that we are expecting okay so the next step could be um, would be to actually verify with the expected value okay and where can you define the expected value you can define the expected value at any locations for example I can define it at the um, test suite level or the project level or test case level okay so like addition addition test level okay so let me click ok and let's define a custom property at the test suite level okay so I'll say just say expected value and I'll say the value as 4 okay and then in the script we'll read this value and then verify with the response now in the actual testing scenarios you won't be hard coding any of the values here you most probably will externalize the data into um, some excel sheet and then re read the data from there but in this scenario just to give you an example i'm just putting the values here in the custom property of the test suite and then i'll be reading this problem value and asserting with the value that we are receiving in the response okay so here now to read this particular value let me expand this window a little bit okay so to read this particular value what we need to do is you can use the context variable okay so context dot and then so currently the context is this particular request because this is the script assertion and this scripts context is only this soap request now to change the context to the test suite what you need to do is you just say context dot get test case dot so basically currently context is so request then we are going to the test case and then we need to go to the test suite okay so get test case and then get test suite and then get property value get property value that we have defined at test suite level and pass the name of the property value so we'll say expected value and if we print this we'll say just log.info just to make sure that it is picking up the correct value and run it now you can see two values are getting printed first one is from the response node and second one is from the expected value okay so it is getting the values that we are making sure that it's coming from the um, custom property now what we'll do is we'll define the param uh, define the variables okay so we'll say uh, actual response and put the response that is coming in the add result node into the actual response and then we'll define another variable expected result and put the value that is coming from the custom properties expected value into the expected result and the next step is to put assert okay so the next step is we'll assert that expected result is equal to actual response all right and that's pretty much it for the verification part so if you run this script now you'll see the script assertion is passed okay because the expected result that we are getting from the response 
is equal to the expected um, the expected result that is coming from the custom properties of the test suite is equal to the actual response that we are coming in the response XML in the response okay so just a couple of lines of code and you will be able to verify the XML responses using the script assertion so it doesn't matter whether you are testing the rest API or soap if the response is in XML you can use a script assertion and these uh, lines of code to verify the responses you can try to play around a bit and um, try to get other node values and try to uh, make sure that you are getting hold of all these concepts so it will be really really helpful in your actual uh, project testing so hope you like the video please do share and subscribe thank you for watching